Hi, I'm Bakul Damli, Director of Business Management in Maxim Integrated. As engineers are designing the next big thing that sometimes are tiny electronic devices, they use a very small battery to reduce the size and weight of their overall device. To maximize this battery, they end up using integrated circuits that are called fuel gauges or gas gauges. For use in tiny devices, it is very important for these fuel gauge ICs to also be very small and to use very low power. To discuss with me Maxim's latest fuel gauge for this kind of applications, I have Jason Wortham, the inventor of model gauge algorithm. Jason, can you tell us about the latest fuel gauges from Maxim? Sure. So we have a new product line uh, called uh, Model Gauge M5EZ, which is an algorithm technology that we've improved the, the robustness of our, our algorithm enough that we're able to do a sort of blind performance uh, on a random battery and, and deliver pretty decent performance, which to you really means it's going to be easier to, to design in, to use, and uh, less problems. Uh, traditionally, fuel gauges have always required a lot of characterization, a, a couple of weeks of uh, battery data collected, and modeling effort in order to perform well. By improving the algorithm robustness, we've been able to deal with that without uh, so much characterization requirement. So I'm going to walk you through how that works. Uh, this this uh, EV kit, this is the 17055 EV kit. It's the uh, newest addition to our M5EZ family. It's a very small IC. Uh, often it'll be used host side because it's uh, smaller and it doesn't have the non-volatile memory of some of the pack side solutions. It's uh, very low quiescent. It's only seven microamps quiescent current, and it ver takes very little to start up. So you really don't need the non-volatile memory, and, and the smaller low quiescent approach is kind of more attractive. Um, I'm going to start up the 17055 EV kit GUI, and just from the beginning, and show you how to set it up for your your random battery. Here I have a very small battery, just 300 milliamp hour cell, uh, the kind of thing you might find in a Bluetooth gadget of some sort. Um, so it, if, it's, if it hasn't been launched before, you'll get this uh, dialog box, as you see. And uh, it's good to type in. I, we usually put a, a label on every one of our batteries. This says Project 2000. And we do that so that we don't confuse this battery and that battery. And, and here it's 2000-2. So I'm just going to type in whatever I put on the label in this description of my battery ID. And uh, I'm going to use the easy config but I need to type in the, the uh, label capacity only, which is 300 milliamp hours. You know, it's kind of uh, surprisingly a round number, and the world generally doesn't work in round numbers, so you know that that's probably not the specific exact capacity of the battery, it's the expected capacity of the battery. And never mind that, we're going to, the fuel gauge is gonna tolerate the, the variation and uncertainty in that capacity, but it's good to know the label capacity at least so the fuel gauge can get started. So then it'll ask you what is the what kind of chemistry, and the vast majority of lithium batteries out there are lithium cobalt oxide, uh, probably 80 or 90 percent of those in production. There's these other chemistries, but really for easy, uh, the best performance is going to be on lithium cobalt oxide and its variants. All the brands have different recipes and different uh, particular chemistry variations, still lithium cobalt oxide though. 3.3 uh, volts is the empty voltage target we'll choose. If you had a Wi-Fi radio that failed at 3.4, maybe you target 3.4 to be 0%. Or if you want to squeeze the most out of your battery, maybe you squeeze it down to 3.0, and there's, you know, you, can, you might be able to deliver 5% uh, more runtime in certain applications. But we're going to set 3.3 as a common target, and, the, and then it asks, what is your charge termination current? Uh, I'm just going to say 300, or 30 milliamps, which is like C over 10, which is kind of you know, reasonable target, but you'll put in whatever you're going to actually target with your charger. And the last one is, are you charging above or below basically 4.2 volts? If you're charging 4.2 volts, don't check the box. If you're charging 4.3 or 4.4 volts or 4.35, something like that, check the box. It'll deal with the remaining variation of the particulars of your charging. So I'm going to uncheck it and then uh, save and, and run. Uh, you have this other option to load an INI if you have a custom configuration, uh, which you'll generally be getting uh, from custom work from Maxim, you can choose this load INI option and, and select the file that you've probably got in an email somewhere. Uh, but for now we're just going to do this, and it brings up the screen, the EVKit GUI screen, says the battery percentage is 73%, 
the cell voltage is 4.015 volts and the open circuit voltage is almost the same. Uh, we haven't really loaded the battery, you know, charged or discharged the battery here. And so you get all of this, you know, basic information on the front page. You can watch if you, if you charge or cycle the battery, you can see some nice graphs on the second page. And it'll automatically log some data so you can inspect that log to understand the performance. But basically, here we are, we're up and running, and we do expect that you'll get pretty decent performance off of this. So Jason, this looks like a very easy to configure fuel gauge. Uh, what kind of accuracy can the designers expect out of this model gauge M5 Easy technology? It's a very fair question. Uh, I think anybody with a lot of fuel gauge experience will have reason to be skeptical about the fuel gauge performance, but really, we've solved the, the diversity problem to a large extent, and the proof of this, and we've done, over, I mean, this battery was project number 2000, for example. We've done over 2000 batteries, uh, custom characterizations for various customers. And uh, uh, the last 300 that we did, we, we did a special test. So each test is, uh, is roughly 200 hours, 150 to 200 hours of battery data. And uh, we, we ran those 200 hours of data times 300 batteries, uh, which includes heavy, medium, light loads and hot room and cold, different temperatures, different load conditions, different batteries, and different brands. Uh, we ran the whole suite of tests with a, a the, basically the easy configuration, so no prior characterization knowledge known about the cells. And of those batteries, 97% can, can achieve within 3% error. So it means you have a very high likelihood of, of a very good performance. Um, so that, that's, that's the proof of, the, of what we've achieved. That looks like a fuel gauge that everybody can believe in, Jason. So uh, besides the EV kit software and hardware, how can you uh, make life simple for the designers who want to use this fuel gauge? So you can find our data sheet online, uh, 17055 data sheet. And there's also a user guide which goes into details about the registers. But for many uh, applications, the data sheet is very simple, and that's all you need. Uh, there's an EV kit hardware and the software, and there's a data sheet for the EV kit, which gives you a layout example and Gerber files and such. Uh, there's a few app notes uh, su describing specific, uh, you know, applications for the for our fuel gauge, uh, especially including the implementation guide. And there's a driver which supports Linux and Android uh, for the 17055, which is basically code incarnation of the implementation guide. Uh, very good, Jason. So looks like this fuel gauge is very simple to implement, very low in IQ, and we are you're providing a lot of material for engineers to design this very easily. For more information, please go to our website, maximintegrated.com, and look for the Model Gauge M5 Easy Devices. Thank you for watching.